Have you ever decided to do something really big? Like, learn how to play guitar. Or, uh, oh, make friends with the new kid down the street. Maybe you even want to bake a master chef-worthy cake for your mom's birthday. You're super excited to get started, but then you sit down with the guitar and... Oh, no. Or you spend all morning working up the nerve to go knock on the new kid's door, and... It turns out he's gone for a week of summer camp. Then you find the recipe for that amazing cake, and it's crazy. Doing big things takes work. It takes making a plan and then sticking with it. There are calluses along the way, patience and courage in building a friendship, and definitely some mess. But when you follow through, you find the music, you grow a friendship, you create amazing edible art. And through it all, others can see how God has given you the strength to stick with it. That's why commitment is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Hey guys, my name is Olivia and welcome to Treehouse. I hear that this month you guys are talking about commitment and commitment is putting a plan into practice. This month, me and Shay are learning how to skate. Sometimes Shay falls when she's skating and it's pretty funny. Anyway, let's get into the story. I made a plan, and I practiced a lot. All oh, that running. And strength training. <laughs> and even training my brain. For a month, it's like training has been my life. Like, I thought about this race constantly. When I decided what to eat, Mm. Oh, when I chose how to spend my time! From morning until night, I kept my mind on the race. That's what you gotta do when you truly commit to something. Like, you've gotta live like it's important to you. Today's story is about a woman who lived her whole life that way. I'll see you when you get back. I've got to get this party started! Ah! 
Today's story is found in Mark 12. It's about a poor woman who gave all that she had to God. I want to hear more about this. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey the week before Passover, the crowds were excited. Hosanna! But the religious leaders were not. He's turning the world upside down. We'll have to fix that, won't we? All week, the religious leaders sent men to try trapping Jesus with trick questions. Teacher, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar? Every time, Jesus gave a wise answer that caught them off guard. Give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give back to God what belongs to God. Jesus knew the religious leaders were so puffed up with pride, they didn't want people to listen to anyone else. Jesus even warned the crowds about them. Watch out for the teachers of the law. They love to have the most important seats. They take over the houses of widows. They say long prayers to show off. One afternoon, Jesus and his disciples visited the temple. They sat down to rest for a moment across from the box where people came to put money they offered to God. Perhaps the disciples, mostly poor fishermen themselves, were impressed by the rich men giving gifts. Check out his robes. I think they actually might be silk. Jesus watched the rich men dropping handfuls of gold coins into the box. He knew that like the religious leaders, they were proud to show how important they were. Check this out, world. Money, money, money. Always sunny in a rich man's world. Uh. Even though these wealthy men were giving impressive amounts of money, Jesus knew they had so much, this was easy for them. Simply a drop in the bucket. Huh. She looks a little out of place. The next person in line clearly wasn't wealthy. In fact, her patched robe showed she didn't have an extra cent to spare. A widow, probably. At that time, if a woman's husband died, she had no way to earn money and often had to live on next to nothing. Two pennies? How's that gonna help anyone? Jesus was watching the woman too, but he saw something different, something more. Come over here, all of you. The disciples gathered around Jesus. What I'm about to tell you is true. That poor widow has put more into the offering box than all the others. <gasps> Jesus' friends tried to sort it out. Um, excuse me, pennies versus gold? You couldn't buy an order of fish nuggets with that. Jesus knew what his disciples were thinking. The others all gave a lot because they are rich, but she gave even though she is poor. She put in everything she had. That was all she had to live on. Oh. When you put it like that. The rich men, like the religious leaders, were concerned with what things looked like on the outside. They didn't want to give in a big way that might force them to change on the inside. But the poor woman, who had almost nothing, chose to give everything. And Jesus saw her heart and knew that her pennies were worth far more than the rich men's gold. Nobody else thought a poor woman giving two small coins was a big deal. But Jesus saw the truth. Other people gave because they were rich. This woman gave everything she had because she was putting her trust in God. She was living for Him. And that's something to celebrate. <laughs> Living for God is about more than giving money. It's about trying to include God in every part of your day. It's about asking yourself before every choice you make, 
Does this honor God? I could copy my friend's homework or do the work myself like I'm supposed to. I'm gonna do the work. Or ask yourself, does what I'm about to do show love to others? <sighs> my friend didn't get me anything for my birthday. Should I get even by giving her nothing? Or should I forgive her? Well, I did already wrap it. She's gonna love it. <laughs> if you ask yourself those questions, it'll help keep your mind on God. It'll help you think about how Jesus lived and loved others. This probably won't become a habit overnight. That's why the one thing to remember today is this. Practice living for God. The more you practice asking yourself, does this honor God? And does this show love to others? The more natural it becomes. It feels good to commit to something and stick to it. I'm glad I committed to running a 5K. I feel stronger and healthier and between you and me, I think I'm going to start training for another one. But first, we celebrate. <laughs> See you around. Wow, I can't believe that lady gave everything she had to God. That's a great way to honor him. One way that I could honor God is by helping Shay up when she falls down on these skates. Thanks so much for joining us today. I have a few announcements for you. Camp is happening this summer, so sign up right now. Go do it right now. And we also have a YouTube channel, so make sure to go check that out. Thanks. Bye.